Friends and family, could I ask you to please rise? On behalf of the faculty and staff, I present to you the Fuqua School of Business Weekend Executive MBA Class of 2023, the Global Executive MBA Class of 2023, the Master of Science in Quantitative Management Health Analytics Class of 2023, the Master of Science in Quantitative Management Business Analytics Class of 2023, and the Master of Science in Quantitative Management Accelerated Business Analytics Class of 2022.
Please be seated. My name is Bill Boulding, and it is my incredible privilege to be the dean of the Fuqua School of Business. In my view, every day at the Fuqua School is a great day, but today is an extraordinary day as we celebrate the accomplishments of these soon-to-be graduates. Today, the spotlight is on them. They've gone on journeys that have been full of fun, tears, stress, joy, any kind of emotion that you want to point to. It's been a difficult journey, but ultimately a rewarding journey and a journey that will continue over the course of your lifetime. So we celebrate you. We want to be sure the spotlight is on you. Having said that, you would not be here without the people surrounding you today. And so I want to thank the friends and the family for getting you to this position, those that are here, those that can't join us today. None of you did this on your own. You did it with help and support. And we're so grateful and so happy that so many people can be with us today to celebrate your accomplishment. It's also the case that you wouldn't be here without the help, support, guidance, and nurturing from our extraordinary faculty. And so I'm very thankful to this world-class faculty for guiding you on this journey. And two, we have a staff that cares deeply about your experience, that has been there every step of the way to make sure that this journey can go as smoothly as possible. And I'm very grateful to them. Finally, I'd like to recognize your student representatives because these representatives not only took on the burden that each of you took on, but they served their classmates in important ways, organizing and coordinating activities, representing your, your views, your voice to faculty and staff, supporting our admissions efforts, and providing leadership for the classes. So could I please ask the class representatives to stand? Thank you. So let's get on with the show. Uh, and to do that, I would like to welcome Ashley Shelby Rosette up to the, the podium who will facilitate the next part of our program. Thank you, Bill. The mediocre teacher tells. The good teacher explains. The superior teacher demonstrates. And the great teacher inspires. This quote exemplifies the deeds of this year's recipients of the Excellence in Teaching Award. These faculty have inspired our students to become better leaders, better managers, better professionals, and better colleagues. So it gives me great pleasure to announce the winners of the Excellence in Teaching Award for the, ex for the Executive MBA classes of 2023. First, the Weekend Executive MBA Class of 2023 has selected Jim Anton. As the winner for his course, Managerial Economics. An experienced econ student said the following, I have an undergraduate and a master's degree in econ, and I can confidently say Jim was one of the best econ instructors that I've had. Another student noted, Professor Anton is the best. I had never liked economics, and I am walking out of this class with econ as one of my favorite topics to read. And a final student said, I can tell how passionate he is about teaching, and he has the perfect skills for it clear communication, funny, 
haha, smart, interactive, and he contextualizes current world dynamics with topics. Excellent professor, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. Congratulations, Jim. Weekend Executive MBA Class of 2023 selected Luis Pereiro as the winner of the Teaching and Excellence Award for his elective course, Corporate Restructuring. In all caps, one student wrote the following, this class was amazing, in caps. The content was fresh and engaging. The professor was absolutely fantastic. The professor was also just so enthusiastic and engaging. It was sincerely a joy to be in class every session. I know I don't speak for only myself when I say I was actually sad to see the class end. Unfortunately, Lewis is not able to be with us this morning, so I will accept this honor on his behalf. Well, it seems that our econ professors are very well represented today because the Global Executive MBA class of 2023 has selected Leslie Marks as the winner of the Teaching and Excellence Award for her course, Managerial Economics. <laughs> so here are the few, a few of the students' comments about Leslie. Professor Marks is passionate about her topic, and it made me excited for it as well. Professor Marks brought positive energy and enthusiasm to the course. Her level of preparation and grasp of the subject matter were exceptional. Great course led by an excellent instructor. Another student said, I had never taken an economics class, so the subject matter was new to me, but Leslie taught it in a way that was easy to understand and apply. I really enjoyed this class. Congratulations, Leslie. And last, but certainly not least for our, our embers, the Global Executive Elective Offerings in 2023, uh, amongst those, the students selected Dan Vermeer as the recipient of the Teaching Excellence Award for his Energy, Markets, and Innovation course. <laughs> One student exclaimed, the course covers such a broad arena of topics, but that's why it's so good. I came in with no background on the topics, and I appreciated how the class moved through so many important topics to give me a solid base understanding of so much. A second student said, um, actually, when a student was asked how Professor Vermeer's class could be improved, the student wrote, I only wish the class were longer. I could spend weeks or months more continuing this class gladly. Congratulations, Dan. Now I'd like to invite MSQM Associate Dean Jeremy Petranka to announce the MSQM Teaching Award winners. Thank you, Ashley. So whenever we talk with students about what they like best about the MSQM program, the faculty is pretty much always towards the top of the list. We've been really lucky from the start of the program to just have outstanding faculty since the beginning. And I've always thought that it must be really difficult to just pick a single award winner year over year. That makes what happens this year all the more astounding because this year, all three programs selected the same faculty member as the winner of the Excellence in Teaching Award. So across the board, and I should have brought quotes now in hindsight, but they all basically say the same thing, that he is passionate about the material. He's genuinely concerned with your learning. He's extremely approachable, and he's supportive throughout the term and after. It's everything we hope for when we select teachers, and I could not be more pleased to announce the Excellence in Teaching Award winner for all three MSQM programs is Mattia Chilero. Now, in 
Unfortunately, because it's an online program and he lives on the West Coast, he can't be here to accept this award, so I'll accept it on his behalf. Thank you. <laughs> That's okay. Um, at this time, I would now like to introduce the class speaker for the Weekend Executive MBA Class of 2023, Joyelle Coleman Alexander. <laughs> Having spent 12 years at Levy Restaurants, she now serves as their Vice President of Business Development and has been in that role since 2018. At Levy, she is on the DNI board and is the co-chair for Levy's Diversity and Inclusion Action Counter Council. Um, her peers describe her as hardworking and an inspiring classmate who is exceptionally impressive with a positive attitude, can-do mindset, and a genuine spirit. Joyelle. Thank you, and good morning. Distinguished guests, family, and friends, it's both an honor and a privilege that I address you on this very special day. I would like to start by telling you a bit about Wimba Class of 2023. I am so proud of the impressive individuals that are a part of my cohort. If one was to poll our graduates, they would find physicians, attorneys, engineers, business leaders, and some business owners, to name a few. These same individuals are spouses, moms, dads, fiancés, just dating, and some still searching singles. We come from every corner of the United States with roots in nearly 20 countries. While over 50% of us already hold advanced degrees, some of us got our first and only over 25 years ago. Yes, we are a special group of unique individuals with one thing in common. We all had the desire and courage to pursue our MBA at Duke University's Fuqua School of Business. But please know, we could not have done it without you. In fact, words cannot describe the gratitude we hold in our hearts for your sacrifice. To our significant others, for that meal that didn't get done and was replaced by emergency takeout, we ask you for forgiveness. To our children, for that ball game we missed or that movie we slept through, we ask you for grace. And to our coworkers, for that extra assignment you took on in our absence, we say we owe you. None of it is in vain. Look what we have accomplished. So in this moment, we celebrate and thank you. We hope we've made you proud. And to my amazing classmates, my goodness, please take a moment and reflect on what we have accomplished. Remember where this all began. As American philosopher said, we do not learn from experience, we learn from reflecting on experience. When we started, this world was paralyzed by a pandemic, but yet we braced ourselves and leaned into the unknown. We kept our spirits high, remained nimble, focused less on what was missing and more on what we had, our program and each other. But just as we got comfortable, life started throwing some serious power punches. Illness, personal issues, family crisis all came against us, but we survived and won. Three words can describe our cohort, courage, resilience, and strength, bro type strength. We are no longer just Team Fuqua, we are the Fuqua family. So in closing, I ask you to please never forget what Dean Bolding said. Successful leaders possess triple threat leadership capabilities, IQ, EQ, and DQ. We must possess intellect, emotional intelligence, and decency. Hold on to the commitment we made to each other, this wonderful school, and our world, and cherish the memories, moments, and relationships you made on this journey, for they're just as important as that paper you'll still hold in your hand. Congratulations, Wimba Class of 2023. Dream big and remember the proof of your desire is in your pursuit. Let's go make history. I love you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Joyelle. Courage, resilience, and strength. I am inspired. 
And now I'd like to move to our Global Executive MBA Class of 2023 class speaker, Robert Joseph Redmond, Jr. So Bob is currently in his 17th year with Eli Lilly. He sits on the leadership team in Lilly's Oncology Business Unit and is an associate vice president there. Known for both his wit and sarcasm, along with his care and determination, Bob was selected by his class to represent them as their class graduation speaker. He is described by his peers as conscientious, dependable, and yet possesses an infectious, fun, loving spirit. Bob? Wow, thank you. Um, first off, uh, Kyle, happy birthday, man. Um, <laughs> hey, so, as, uh, as I was reflecting on what I was gonna say today, I thought what I would do is simply share some of the truly invaluable lessons I've learned from this wonderful group of people over the last couple of years. First, uh, I learned from Josh that it's indeed possible for a student to talk more than a professor in class. <laughs> and I think we all learned this lesson because you could always hear his voice booming and reverberating through the walls, even if you were, were sitting next door. <laughs> there it is. I learned how to up my fashion game. I think, Christy, you're with me on this one. When I lost my luggage in Berlin, forcing me to uh, buy and wear that same pink sweater every single day for about 10 days in a row. I learned the definition of codependency from Mudra and Darren, <laughs> as I don't think any of us have seen one without the other in the last couple of years. I learned the power of forgiveness from Garrett and O and Forgan after they forgave me for breaking their ankles playing pickup ball here on campus. I learned that you can stretch the boundaries of what business casual means from Vishnu and Chandler, apparently with headbands and tank tops. I learned from Wagner, actually I can't, I can't think of anything I learned, I learned from Mike. <laughs> I learned that, that having a healthy fear of God uh, can make you more productive from our financial accounting class. I learned that the, the virtue of selflessness from the entire cohort, from all that extra credit you passed my way in term one. I learned that you can try to come to a program like this to diversify your network away from Lily, where I work, and still get followed here by Rebecca, Jen, and Chris. You know, after meeting and interacting with Matt and Mitch, I learned that I should actually feel really confident in my own leadership competencies. <laughs> I learned from Jamie. Actually, you know what? I'm not gonna mess, I'm not gonna mess with Jamie. Maybe, maybe that was the lesson, you don't mess with Jamie. Uh, it's risky, it's risky. And I think we all learned how to dance in Peru. I know I learned how to dance in Peru with my wonderful teacher over there, Alex, who taught me the important lesson that, that no one puts Bobby in a corner. On a serious note, I did learn about sacrifice. I think we heard it a couple times, and I want to thank my wife. Francesca is here, I love you. Thank you for taking the brunt of raising two kids while I was away, and I apologize, I'm gonna be around a lot more now. Um, and I think that goes to say for all of our friends and family who sacrificed so we could be here and have this wonderful and enriching experience. So let me close with this. I, I, a big reason I chose this program was one of the missions here to create business leaders of consequence, where business can be a force for good in the world. And I think that many of us understand that leadership has one fundamental commonality. And it's not about the work, it's not about the classes the, and, the, and the business, it's about the people. Uh, it's always about the people. And as I reflect on my time here, from the very beginning I knew this class would become those leaders of consequence. And the reason I know this is that five days into our first residency here, um, my father passed away. And the love and support and friendship that was extended my way by this cohort from people that only knew me for, for five days uh, was truly something remarkable and special. And that includes the faculty and administration as well. And I know most of you probably didn't even know about that situation, but it didn't matter. The kindness and connection that was extended my way from this cohort uh, got me through that time. And that love and genuine caring from you all was why I knew 
that you would all become those leaders of consequence. And I would follow each and every one of you. So I'll leave you with, uh, with a few words, maybe. We can all go off, we can go off to make the world a better place. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bob. It is now my great pleasure to be able to introduce the class speaker for the Master of Science of Quantitative Management programs, Alice Shu. Now, Alice's background is incredible. Um, to give you some highlights, founder of Bite Size, which is a strategy and data consulting firm. She works with startups. She works with Fortune 500. Uh, she has a BA in management and government. We've been extremely lucky to have her leadership as a student rep for the class throughout the year. And one thing that I have noticed about this particular graduation is that there's a whole lot of people that don't like free time, as you will find out as you are uh, looking for something to do once you graduate. And Alice is currently working on a children's book on data storytelling that she will hope to have published soon, which just goes to speak on, on how incredible and driven she is. Also, if you get a chance, a quick uh, hint for you, Read her bio in the program if you get a chance, especially the second paragraph. With that, Alice. Thank you. Hi, it is an honor to speak on behalf of the MSQM programs this year. Class of 2023, we did it. So, <laughs> like any resourceful analytics professional, I did consult my trusty advisor, ChatGPT, for a unique, inspirational message that will definitely make people laugh. After several passes, though, Mr. GPT was still pretty adamant about including various quotes by Archimedes, so unfortunately, we parted ways due to creative differences. I switched gears. I reverted to a simpler time and place, to childhood. So I'm going to talk about lessons from Pixar's first film, Toy Story. Toy St I, I hope you'll forgive me for spoiling the plot of a 28-year-old children's movie here, but uh, Toy Story is about a young boy's toys who come to life when he's not around. It focuses on the relationship between Woody, a pull stream cowboy doll, and Buzz Lightyear, a space ranger toy. As they vie for the affections of their owner, Andy, they end up going on an adventure together and learning important lessons about friendship and loyalty. That was a pretty great summary, so it's a good thing I gave ChatGPT a chance after all. Well, today I want to talk about something that we can learn from the journey of Woody and Buzz, and that is the importance of willingly embracing the unknown. So when we meet him, Woody's a toy that's just got it made. So Woody's happy in his career, he's got his Excel spreadsheets, he's probably headed for the C-suite. Well, as the movie starts, there's suddenly a brand new toy that Andy meets, Buzz Lightyear. Woody immediately feels threatened. But we should think of Buzz as ChatGPT, or as any disruptor in any industry. Rather than feeling threatened, Buzz is a friend to be embraced. Their eventual friendship makes each of them stronger and ultimately becomes the heart and soul of the Toy Story franchise. So just like Woody took a chance on Buzz, by embarking on this MSQM journey, we all embraced a huge unknown. Applying for a new program a year into the pandemic is definitely taking a leap of faith. Undertaking it while juggling all of life's daily responsibilities is not easy. So let me emphasize, it was worth it. By embracing the unknown, you have enriched your careers and your lives. So keep having the courage to go after what you want. Keep embracing the unknown. In conclusion, I want to mention how grateful I am for my parents and my fiance who have always encouraged me to take that occasional leap of faith. All of our friends and families here have made numerous sacrifices to support us. So on behalf of all of us, I want to say thank you. We are also grateful to our professors, to our fantastic MSQM program leadership, and to the phenomenal Fuqua community as a whole. Lastly, thank you to the BA, ABA, and HA cohorts. This program was special because of you. We've formed bonds far beyond our virtual program. So as we keep embracing the unknown, don't forget these bonds that we've built. 
Class of 2023, congratulations on an amazing achievement. And remember, you've got a friend in me. So long, partners. Thank you to all of our, our uh, class speakers who were absolutely fantastic. It's now my great pleasure to introduce the commencement speaker, Mark Royce. I can tell you that choosing a graduation speaker is no simple thing, especially for a group like this today. You need someone who is significantly accomplished, someone who you can say, wow, I aspire to reach that level of accomplishment in my career. It's someone who should be able to share wisdom from the journey that they've been on. Because it's so important as you think about the journey you will continue on post Fuqua. And it's someone who should embody the values that we cherish within Fuqua, who does things the right way, where that accomplishment is done with and through other people bringing out their best. And if we're lucky, you get the, the icing on the cake, which is a Duke connection. With Mark Royce, we have all of those things. Mark is incredibly accomplished, president of General Motors, one of the iconic brands in the world, and a company going through a transformation destined to change this company in a way that changes the world for the better. They seriously have embraced the idea of business as a force for good. Mark personally is an incredible human being. If you want to have someone who exemplifies IQ, EQ, DQ, he's right here with us. He's just an amazing person and someone who consistently brings out the best in others. And I can tell you from personal experience how wise he is. First, he made the smart decision to go down your path many years ago. He has sat in your seat, been in your shoes as a Fuqua graduate from 1990. But given his level of accomplishment and what he's learned during his career journey, he joined our board eight years ago and has been an incredible source of advice and insight over those eight years. And so he's someone who I consider to be one of the school's most trusted advisors. And I now entrust him to speak to all of you. Mark, please join the podium. Well, good morning, and uh, thank you, Bill. I'm not, I'm not sure of all that, but I do know that I'm, I'm here today wearing um, the, the drab and the blue and white um, for Duke, which I'm, I'm very grateful for the opportunity to talk to you. And uh, this is a landmark day for you, and congratulations to everybody in the class of 2023. It's remarkable that I'm up here today for many reasons, not the least of which is that 33 years ago, as Bill mentioned, I was sitting right where you are, wondering what was next for me, and wondering what would be on the menu at the post-ceremony reception. So I bet you're wondering that right now as well. Another reason why it's remarkable for me today is among the graduates is my son Grant. It's, I'm incredibly proud of Grant and what he's accomplished, and I'm incredibly honored to be asked to speak at his graduation because it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Amazing, right? It's just, thank you. Uh, he's, he's sitting in your chair. I could go on, but, but I'll stop there because I don't want to embarrass him, but uh, I think it's too late for that. So um, I'm also not going to embarrass him or bore you by going on about my time here at Fuqua long ago. I don't think anyone is dying to hear the details of a case study we did about the long-term retail market viability of the cordless home telephone. <laughs> think about that for a minute, right? A lot has changed around here since those days, but not everything. 
I told my son he could go wherever he wanted for grad school, but that Duke has something no others have, and that's Team Fuqua. And yes, it is the people. The sense of teamwork and camaraderie that was so prominent here when I was in school remains a very strong priority of daily life today, as I know you know. I know that because of Grant's experience and also because of my time on the Fuqua Board of Visitors. In the 90s, and likely to an extent today, a lot of business schools recruited students, students knowing that about half of them wouldn't make it to second year. Think about that. Not Duke. Fuqua remains committed to building a solid, diverse, outstanding student body and to teaching them the value of teamwork, innovation, and changing people's lives for the better. That's what B-School and business is all about, right? I think a lot of what I'm describing is due to the influence of another constant at Fuqua since I was a student here, and that's Dean Bill Bolding. Bill was on the faculty when I, was, when I studied here, and he's been a huge asset to this school ever since. As dean, he has helped to restore financial stability, promote academic growth, and foster the spread of innovation within the school and ultimately beyond. I think we owe him a big debt of gratitude for all he has done for Fuqua, his students, faculty, and staff. Thank you so very much, Dean Bolding. And creating an environment for the development of innovation that I just mentioned has long been a hallmark of Fuqua and Duke University. And that's a credit not only to Bill, but also to his predecessors and a long list of faculty and administrators at this school. We have fostered and created innovation across the board in finance, operations, marketing, consulting, you name it, Fuqua has made it better. That's something that you will take with you always from here. Always innovate, never stop learning, seek opportunities for personal professional growth because they're out there and you're doing that. And as you pursue them, don't be afraid of a challenge. You're uniquely prepared to handle more than you think, thanks to this institution and the hard work you've put in here. But speaking of challenges and innovation, I'd be remiss if I didn't suggest the auto industry to you as a viable and exciting career path. So there. <laughs> Our business is not the Rust Belt. It's not old manufacturing. It's not what people think it is. It's high-tech, high-stakes, and one that is accelerating the world's transformation to electric vehicles and autonomous vehicles. The first job of more than 25% of Fuqua graduates is in tech. We are hiring a tremendous amount of people in tech, and it's going more and more every year. We do a lot of software these days, but we still do shocks and struts, although we do you know, less of those, I would say. We're reinventing ourselves on the fly, and I am thankful I had my experience here at Duke Fuqua to draw upon to help reinvent the company from a leadership standpoint. I came here as an undergrad um, engineering student, but Fuqua absolutely prepared for a life beyond, much beyond engineering. The bottom line is that our business is changing rapidly, daily, and it's exciting to be part of it and help make the world a better place at the same time. Just as you always should be learning, always be helping, always be giving. We have an obligation to make the world better, to leave it a better place in our children and grandchildren than we found it. I believe that's one of the major responsibilities we have in business, and I believe that's because it's a value that was instilled in me when I was here at Fuqua. The school taught us just as it taught you to do what is right. That's the kind of school this is. It's not always easy to do the right thing. It's not always easy to recognize the voice of your conscience and listen to it. We all have a conscience. That's what makes us human. Animals don't have it. Dogs don't feel bad when they steal our food off the table. They feel great. We all find ourselves in tough situations occasionally and there might be an easy way out, but it's usually not the right way out. If the right thing to do in the, it's, is the easy thing to do, then by definition, it is not a tough situation. You don't learn from that. You learn from doing the right thing 
especially when it's difficult. And you know, Martin Luther King said, life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? I think you'll find the most rewarding path is the path that makes the world better, the path that improves people's lives, the path that helps others. And you've been given a great head start down that path by student studying right here at Fuqua at Duke. I know that one of the most rewarding things we've done in recent years at General Motors was during the first months of the pandemic. We converted a factory in Indiana into making ventilators together with a company called Ventec at lightning speed with incredible agility. Once we got it to full speed, we were building a new ventilator every seven minutes. We made 30,000 ventilators in 154 days. The workers and the employees who converted that facility, the engineers who put the assembly lines together, the supply chain experts who sourced all of those parts, the people who did the actual manufacturing, all of the early throws of the lockdown. They will all tell you, each one of them, that it's among the most rewarding things they've ever done in their careers. They worked every day with laser fo per focus, purpose, urgency, and speed. They literally saved lives. It's hard to find any silver linings that came out of that horrifying year or the years that followed. But if there is one, it's that projects like this one and so many others helped business from being considered part of the problem to being seen as part of the solution. People saw business step up to help however and wherever it could. And they saw business adapt quickly to a world where everything about work changed seemingly overnight. You know who else adapted quickly to that situation? You, all of you. You have completed the entirety of your B-School experience among a, amid a global pandemic. There is no case study for that, no playbook. By getting to this point, you have proven that you are flexible, resilient, determined, and able to rise to meet any challenge. For this, I congratulate you because this resilience will carry you and bolster you throughout your careers and your lives. What kind of uncertainty will scare you now? They'll definitely encounter it. It's not a perfect world you're about to enter or re-enter. You'll find economic stress, supply chain constraints, inflation, bank failures, war, natural disasters, and all kinds of calamity to be named later. But you're ready for anything now. You know how to hit a curveball. You're resilient and you are prepared. I hope you remember exactly how well Duke Fuqua helped you get to this place and, more importantly, where you're going from here. I encourage you to give back, help others, mentor young people, and make the world better. You're certainly well equipped to do so. Most of all, I congratulate you again, and I can't wait to see what you do next. So thank you so much for letting me be part of your day today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mark. Thank you for doing everything that helps restore confidence and trust in business as a platform for positive change in the world. And thank you for demonstrating right here, right now, what it means to be a leader of consequence. On behalf of the entire community, I'd like to give you this gift. We will now transition to recognition of the graduates. So Ashley. Thank you, Bill. At this time, we want to honor those who have distinguished themselves amongst their peers in their respective academic programs. So it gives us pleasure to introduce the Fuqua Scholars. 
The Fuqua scholars are those who graduate in the top 10% of their class. Now, I will read the names of the Fuqua scholars alphabetically, and I will ask that as I read the name, that each person stands in his, her, or their place. I would also ask that the audience wait until I have read all the names before indicating their support and congratulations. That will help us to make sure that all the names can be heard. So thank you in advance for that. So we begin with the weekend executive MBA class of 2023 Fuqua scholars are Ramakrishna Sastri Budampati, Jason Andrew Curry, Prashant Dillon, David Scott Demick, Paul Davis Fancher, Ankur Gandhi, Brett William Guy, Peter Grassi, Amit Halder, Jean Heyman, Malu Jayan, Madeline Maledic, Jonathan Nasser, Uma Nidigatu, James Charles Page, Arun Kumar Prakash, Sanji Lakshman Rohira, William Andrew Segal, Dharma Subramanian, Mark Stephen Thaler. Now, please join me in congratulating the Weekend Executive MBA class of 2023 Fuqua Scholars. Thank you so much. You now may be seated. Now we shift to our Global Executive MBA class of 2023 Fuqua Scholars. And they are Jamie Bizdera, Eric John Davids, John Lucas Edwards, Aaron Thomas Mochino, Atushi Osada, Jorgen Richard Rasmussen, Robert Joseph Redman Jr. Please join me in congratulating them on this amazing accomplishment. It is now my honor to introduce the MSQM Fuqua Scholars. So first up is Health Analytics Class of 2023. The Fuqua Scholars are Marissa Linda Cavallo, Jesse Han Kim, Xuao Niao, and Chao Ping Wu. Please join me in congratulating the MSQM HA Class of 2023 Fuqua Scholars. Up next is the Master of Science in Quantitative Management Business Analytics Class of 2023. The Fuqua Scholars are Justin Jerome Goninen, Michael Thomas Hickey, Ji Tao Li, Jong Mi Siok, and Ala Xu. Please join me in congratulating the MSQM BA Class of 2023 Fuqua Scholars. And lastly, I would like to introduce the Master of Science in Quantitative Management Accelerated Business Analytics Class of 22 Fuqua Scholar. There's just one. And it is Michael Duke Meehan. Please join me in congratulating Michael on his outstanding achievement. Now, it is the time that many of you have been waiting for to individually recognize each of our graduates. So today, we ask each of our graduates to come forward to be recognized and congratulated by the entire assembly gathered here today. At this time, I would like to ask Amanda Laird, Associate Director and Program Manager for the Weekend 
Executive MBA Class of 2023 to come forward to read the names of the Weekend Executive MBA Class. We ask the graduates to file up to the stage on your right. As your name is called, please accept a diploma cover and our congratulations. Now you remember a moment ago when I told you to refrain from your celebration until the very end? Well, that doesn't apply here. So we actually want to make sure that you celebrate each one of the graduates as they cross the stage. Okay. Yeah, you ready? Joelle Coleman Alexander. <laughs> Imor Tianosa Agbor. <laughs> Belin Maria Alvarez Fialonga. Gregory Allen Ayers, Jr. Joshua Todd Babbitts. Kyle Bailey. Sushma Parvati Banda. Michelle Rose Van Clater. J. Andrew Cosme Barcelona. Suman Kumar Bassetti. Bradford Joseph Bauerkemper. Sparsh Bardvaj. Roderick J. Blaylock. David Borland. James Robert Boswick III. Kristen Elizabeth Bridgers. Michael Joseph Bristansky. Ramakrishna Sastri Budampati. Bharathanan Bukka. Kyle David Burnett. Deanna M. Cardona. Christopher Andrew Cardwell. Alejandro S. Carrillo Lizardo. Charles Fraser Chapel. Ri Chen. You want Sean? Sean Chen. Dwaipayan Chowdhury.
Anan Toxi. Rushal Chug. Stephen Colville. Timothy M. Conkin. Gabrielle Cotram Florido Marrera. Jason Andrew Curry. Ram Manohar Lohi Tarisa. Tony Samya Darwish. Nandini Dasgupta. Whitney DeAngelis. Natasha Mane DeLong. Anthony De Palma. Prashant Dillon. Hillary Dillsaver. David Scott Dimmick. Michael Joshua Evans. Paul Davis Fancher. Devin Farrow. Richard Allen Fisher. Huh? <laughs> Encore Gandhi. <laughs> Shyama D. Gandhi. Brett William Guy. Ramdeep Kaur Gill. Jacob Randolph Glover. Alex Goldenstein. Mason Whitfield Graham. Peter Grassi. Kareem Tufik Habel. <laughs> Lindsay Hackett. <laughs> Amit Halder. <laughs> Jennings Troy Holloway Jr. Taylor Douglas Honeycutt. Ryan Isham. Nicole L. Jackson. Sudhir Jamalad Madaka. Malu Jan. Pradeep Jevel Murgan. Anu Kalivanan. Jason Lee Callas. Naranjan Reddy Kayam. Errol Savage Kelter.
Sujit Shankar Kandagli. Matthew Kasinski. Michelle Clar. Matthew Joseph Krattenmaker. Gloria Marie Kubicki. Ila Singh Kumar. Duck Hoon Lee. Yangling Lee. Spencer Leon Thornton. Amelia Chanyi Liu. Matthew Ryan Lutch. Jonathan David McDermott. Krishna Prasad Mahalingam. Amy N. Mansberger. Michael Seth Mard. Nitin Mera. Patrick Kenneth Mesher. Samuel Daughtry Metzler. Jennifer Lynn Miller. Oksana S. Milovidova. Madeline Maladek. Pratyusha Murasani. Christy Waldrop Murphy. Elizabeth Christine Nagel. Jeffrey William Nichols. Uma Nidigatu. Sudesh Ori. Abiola Ojo. Lillian Orlando. James Charles Page. Kate Boaz Paladin. Catherine Orgill Palmer. Alexander Hovseb Papalian. David Lewis Parrish. Twinkle Patel. Sean Stephen Penny. Jared Perlmutter. Luke Jefferson Poji. Arun Kumar Prakash.
Assad Nawaz Khwazrani. Shalini Ranjan. Lakshman Rao. Prasanth Reddy. Aaron Reed. Melissa Restrepo Conde. Ashley Nicole Richardson. Brian Robinson. Sanjay Lachman Rohira. Himanshu Ropia. Clodelia J. Rose. Sagar Samaria. John Togba Sampson Jr. Ricky Joseph Sanchez Jr. Kristen Joe Sario. Ashley Nicole Seaton. William Andrew Sagali. Pramid Singupta. Kunal J. Shaw. Vivek Vinay Shaw. Hitton Shape Stephen Singer Chet Singh BJ Singh Matthew Joseph Severio. Nicholas Bradley Smith. Faustine Robert S. Sonnen. Mahmoud Shahab Sori. Mark Joseph Spiernak. Jessica Aaron Stark. Kyle Allen Stuver. Dharma Subramanian. Zachary Alexander Summers. Mark Stephen Thaler. Holly Lynn Thomas. Dean Charles Thompson. Sarisha K. Thompson. (laughs) 
Varvara Tushkova. Dwayne Trang. Caleb Alexander Tucker. Yadavan Vera Tharaja. Alexander Vidor. Amanda Burgett Vigno. Jessica Fias. Derek Lee Wales. John Leonard Washington. William Thomas White Jr. Brittany Joy Williams. And Neela Kant Yera. Let's try that again. Congratulations to our weekend executive MBA class of 2023. <laughs> Julie Craig will now read the names of the global executive MBA class of 2023. I don't have to ask them to come forward because they are already here and ready. So when your name is, at, when your name is called, uh, please accept your diploma cover and the congratulations. Thank you. Robert Joseph Redmond, Jr. <laughs> Garrett Scott Abrams. Amanda Alvarado Savarain. <laughs> Philippe Amarim. Chandler Ryan Bell. Michael Kenneth Birdsall. Jamie Bizdera. Angela Chow. Valerie Renee Coe. Alyssa R. Cummins. Joanne Dai. Eric John Davids. Peter DeLira. <laughs> John Lucas Edwards. Forgan L. Mubadek. Dimitri Golovin. <laughs> Lindsay Taylor Gray. <laughs> Alyssa Danielle Groves. 
Sebastian Erans Bustamante. Eduardo Herrera Riera. Alejandra Honey. Anuvrat Ranjan Ja. Maureen Rita Muthoni Kamau. Christy Michelle K. Clay Patrick Kinney. Aaron Nasurutia Mbati. Shelly Mittal. Kevin Floyd Moore the second. Aaron Thomas Masino. Courtney Sue Neiman. Sushi Asada. Woo! Mudra Kiran Patel. Woo! Vishnu Manoj Kumar Patel. Woo! Darren Yasamin Peck. Woo! Josh Richard Pedigo. <laughs> Ty Lee Pomeranke. <laughs> Daniel Alejandro Quevedo. <laughs> Jorgen Richard Rasmussen. Alexander Ringo. Curtis Mitchell Ross. Deanna Mary Sasaki. Christopher Michael Shanefeld. Stephen Matthew Chennault. Elkan Shariev. Adam James Smith. Ash Samantha Ashley Miachi Spencer. Kyle Straub. Laura Beth Sturdivant. Steve Surya Donata. Molly Rose Telford. Dylan Marshall Thomas. Umesh Kumar Trika. Francis Azubike Ugoji. Harish Namdalo Vantavilu. Michael Stephen Wagner. Rebecca Wolf.
Fei Zhao. And from the Global Executive Class of 2022, Aili Yuan. Congratulations to all of our Executive MBA graduates. Jeremy. At this point, we now turn to the MSQM programs. I'd first like to ask Alistair Erickson Ludwig, our Director and Program Manager, to come forward to read the names of the MSQM Health Analytics Class of 2023 graduates. You are already here, so we're good there. As your name is called, please accept your diploma cover and our congratulations. Arusha Bavare. Emily Grace Bickle. Justin Carico. Marissa Carvolo. David Christian Fenske. Priyanka Kandhari. Jesse Han Kim. Karen Malason Roja. Giselle Alexis Montagna. Shu Nu Phyllis Nagari Indruru Un Kun O Luciana Petko. Jasmine Renee Redwood. Matt Robert Sarkozy. Jason Seltzer. Radhika Venkatesh. Wafik Wafa. Chao Ping Wu. Han Shu. Please join me in congratulating the MSQM HA Class of 2023. <laughs> Up next, I now invite Al Starr to read the names of the MSQM Business Analytics Class of 2023 graduates. Alice Renee Yu. Nishant Argawal. Sanjay Akina. Max Tyler Benton.
Gustavo Sapita Jr. Will Chang. Rose Selena Dowley. Joshua Wayne Duncan. Danielle Lynn Erickson. Ian Gallardo. Justin Goninen. Bryce Connor Haley. Michael Thomas Hickey. Thomas Jackson. Asif Jane. Jitao Lee. Patrick Lundgren. Joshua Lynch. John Andrew Maxwell. Andy Morava. Saba Parvez. Trevor William Ross. Amit Sahish. Jongmi Siok. Mohammed Shaheen. Brandon Michael Smith. Daniel Spiegel. Manjil Thapa. Megan Aylin Tonner. Daniela Valeriano. Yuki Wong. Brent Wayne Wilkin. Jinming Zhang. Lingqi Zhang. Liz Jong. Jim Jong. Hui Jong. Wenlu Jong.
please join me in congratulating the MSQM BA class of 2023. I would now invite Al Starr to read the names of the MSQM Accelerated Business Analytics class of 2022 graduates. Kenyatta Tumor Barnes. Grace Osei. John Carter McFarland. Karan Patel. Chris Balsamos. Join me in congratulating the MSQM ABA class of 2022. And all of our graduates. I present to you the weekend global and MSQM graduates of 2023 and in some cases 2022. Congratulations. So you're now alumni. And as alums, I'd like you all to stand so I can give a few words in your newfound status. So, I'm going to speak to the graduates. I'm going to ask everyone in the audience to remain seated until I finish speaking. The faculty and staff recess out, the students recess out, and then I hope everyone can join us back at the business school to celebrate this great day. But before we do that, thank you. Thank you to the graduates. Every gra graduating class wants to know what makes us special. And I think you heard it from your class speakers. You heard it from our commencement speaker, that you made a decision to come to Fuqua when the world was in turmoil. And instead of crawling in, putting your head in the sand, crawling under the covers, you move forward. You showed the resilience, the determination, that in a world that was so damaged, you would do something to make a difference. And so thank you for bringing back the spirit of Team Fuqua. I think that all of you feel a sense of elation today, at least I hope you do, because you've done something that was incredibly difficult. And maybe just a tiny bit of sadness. And in fact, I heard, I heard descriptions of these courses that you want them to keep going. So maybe some sadness that we're coming to the end of this academic journey. But I have a request of you, which is there's one group here that has no sadness whatsoever that you're done. And that's the group supporting you that came here today to celebrate your accomplishment and those people who can't be here today. Even though this day is about you, I want you to be sure that you show your profuse and persistent gratitude to the people who got you where you are today. Please don't forget that even though the spotlight's on you, other people made this happen. Second thing that I ask of you is please stay in touch with Fuqua. This is, a, this is a, a membership for a lifetime. Team Fuqua doesn't go away at graduation. 
it stays with you forever. Think about how you can give back to the people that will follow you, just as people gave back to you to make the most of your experience, to give you the open doors, the advice, the wisdom, the helping hand that you may have needed and may still need. So please do the same for others. Don't forget us. Third request is, you're gonna, you're gonna think this one is ridiculous, but how about you stay in touch with each other? And you're all thinking, well, of course we will. We went through, we went through whatever description you wanna use, a difficult time together, an ordeal. We went through moments of joy and celebration. These are my friends for a lifetime. And they truly are your friends for a lifetime. But you can't let life get in the way of saying, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to my classmate next week because this week I'm super busy. And before you know it, a week is a month, is a year, is five years, 10 years. And you know today as you stand there, these are people who meant so much to you through your journey who mean so much to you today and will mean so much to you in the future if you can keep those bonds alive. Please do that. And two last things. So we, we brought you here because we saw something special in you. We saw people who could make a difference in the world, who could use business as a force for positive change. And with that comes a certain level of responsibility. Some of you, maybe one or two of you may remember that when I spoke to you when you began this journey, that I urged all of you to pursue happiness. Some of you took this quite seriously and felt like that meant you should have lots of parties. But you know that's not what I meant. I wanted you to have fun, occasionally. But what I really wanted was for you to achieve happiness in the sense that Aristotle intended it, which is to make full use of your talents along the lines of excellence. And so this is my request of you, that each of you pursue excellence. Do not shy away from giving your very best. And then finally, you know I'm going to say this. Never, ever lose the decency that each and every one of you need to achieve greatness. Thank you all so much.